Okay, so now we're going to look at hedging with options. And uh, so I think you need to be aware on the exam, uh, if they say something like uh, they want uh, downside protection, upside potential, they want something which is contingent, you know, we're talking about options as opposed to futures where we're, or forwards where we're locked in. So uh, I think again, the same principles that uh, you need to remember from basic uh, hedging, you know, what is your home currency? Uh, what is the currency that you have exposure in? And what is your outlook for that currency? And then you can now decide on what to do. So you know, in this quick example here, just remember, we, we know what a put option is and what a call option is. And think about it from the long side. A put option allows you to sell something. What are we talking about? We're talking about the base currency. So you're selling the base if you're talking about a, a put option. Uh, if you have a call option and you're long that, that allows you to buy something. What are you buying? You're buying the base currency. So in this example, I just want to reinforce that you're focused on the base currency. And when you're answering questions on the exam, just look for the best available answer that satisfies what you need to do. So here's an example, a manager holding, uh, a US manager holding assets denominated in Canadian dollars. So our home currency is the US. Uh, we have exposure in Canadian. Uh, the manager believes the Canadian is going to depreciate relative to the US. So what do we want to do? We want to reduce our exposure to Canadian. So I'm looking for an answer on the exam. I'm looking for something that says uh, to uh, sell Canadian or buy US if this is a if this is an item set multiple choice question. If it's an essay question, then I'm just making sure that uh, that the information that's given in the question lines up. I'll look at the currency pair and then I'll be able to make my recommendation. So in this case, uh, let's see, here's a currency pair. So US over Canadian. Uh, so uh, let's see, to read on. So to hedge the risk, the manager takes a long position in a put option on the Canadian dollar. So this must mean that the Canadian dollar is the base currency. So there it is. Now, what if we were given uh, the currency pair as Canadian over US and the US was the base currency? then a put option would not make sense. That means selling US, so we don't want this. So what would we do? Well, in this case, uh, we would use a call option, buy a call option, which gives us the right but not the obligation to buy US and, and in effect sell Canadian, which is what we want. So again, make sure you're comfortable with the language and you note the currency pair. Okay, now the other part that I think you must know is how to interpret the cost of the option. They might say something along the lines the manager is concerned about cost. The cost of an option is given by the delta. So uh, the higher the delta, the higher the cost. Uh, the lower the delta, the, the lower the cost. Because we're talking about whether we're in the money or at the money or below the money, uh, out of the money, I should say. So you don't even need to know that language. Just know, you know, if, you, if they said something like a 25 delta option, uh, that would be a more expensive than a 10 delta option. So there it is. You can recognize this now. I think that they will have a, a, a question. So there it is, the lower the delta, the lower the cost of the option. So if the uh, if the item set or the question said the manager was concerned about cost, they want to hedge, then you'll be looking for a lower uh, uh, delta. That's all. Okay, now what else? Uh, just to talk about other uh, strategies. Well, a caller now, this it consists of a, a, a long put and a short call. The reason why we would go for a caller is uh, it's a low cost. So here's other suggestions to lower the cost. Use a caller. So for hedging with a long put option and we want to offset the premium, we would short a call option. That's a caller. Now the text also talks about something called a risk reversal. Sometimes they just call it a reversal. This is the opposite of a caller. It's a short put and a long call option. So make sure that you know the difference between a risk reversal and a caller. We could also use a spread uh, where, you, where we are uh, long a put and then short another put with a lower exercise price. So uh, just knowing these uh, as strategies 
uh, for lowering the cost. And you'll get that from the question. Uh, that's uh, uh, what I think will be coming. So, uh, okay, we know about uh, about uh, uh, the symmetrical payoffs uh, and the asymmetrical payoffs for uh, for options. I think we should know just the basics here. Uh, we know about options, you know, leaving upside potential and downside protection. We know about a protective put option. Okay, so all of this I think is uh, is uh, basic information that we already know. Uh, now, uh, what else? Just to think about the decision to hedge, the cost benefit. In case they go down this road, I mean, it may not be in this context here, but it was mentioned. So you would uh, have to look at the option premium. How much do you pay? And compare that to the uh, potential savings from the currency movement. Uh, you'd also have to bring in your, your uh, aversion to risk. So uh, I think this will probably be this cost benefit. That will be handled in the... Uh, in the uh, roll yield from that uh, futures and forward uh, type of uh, context. Okay, so let's uh, let move forward here and talk about hedging multiple currencies. So uh, now with multiple currencies, uh, we are including, we're incorporating correlation between the various currencies. So we can calculate the risks of individual assets here. So this would be the risk of asset one, the risk of asset two, uh, and this would be, you know, the uh, the foreign currency return and then the currency risk. So I think we've seen this before. And uh, and now uh, down here in terms of uh, portfolio risk, standard deviation. Well, this is the, the okay the variance of returns. If we took the square root, it would be the it would be the the uh, standard deviation. But it's a pretty much our standard our, our standard formula here, right back to level one for calculating portfolio. Uh, variance or portfolio standard deviation. So, uh, so now let's just talk about this minimum variance hedge ratio. So uh, we may use a regression to find the uh, optimal hedging uh, ratio. The hedge ratio is the beta here. I don't think you're going to do anything fancy. I think they will give us this equation. Uh, you might calculate beta. So remember, beta is uh, is the uh, think about it as the covariance uh, 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 between the currency and the currency movement. Well, what does that mean? Well, we could break it apart to uh, the uh, standard deviation of the uh, return in domestic currency over the standard deviation of the currency movement times the correlation uh, of the currency to the uh, uh, of the domestic return to the currency movement. So correlation times the ratio of standard deviation, that's level one right there, calculating beta. So you may have to do that on this exam, or you may just have to uh, interpret it straight from the, uh, uh, the um, regression which is given. Okay, so let's just look at an example here really quickly. So this is a, a cross-hedging uh, learning example. And, you know, I just created these questions for tutorial purposes. Let's just bring them all up here so we can see them together because I think that uh, this uh, may be an exercise that you must, uh, you, you know, do because you might see it on the exam. And uh, so, uh, again, uh, I think that they don't have room for all of these questions, but I think from a tutorial point of view, they are something that uh, we should be aware of. So again, let's go back to our strategy. Uh, we're a U.S. manager, okay? So U.S. is the home currency. Uh, we hold assets in euros, uh, Canadian dollars. That's uh, that's uh, uh, our exposure. And now they've given us the uh, foreign currency asset returns, the currency movement, uh, the uh, the risk associated with these uh, assets, and then the the currency risk and now the correlation between the currencies. And uh, so we can look at this and, you know, something that strikes me right away is this, uh, these the uh, asset risk right there of 0%. So, uh, so in question one, it says, you know, what type of assets must we be holding? So by seeing that there's no risk here, these must be risk-free assets, T-bills or, or, or something along those lines, or, or uh, uh, um, you know, euro deposits, uh, something which is risk-free. Then it's now just a, a matter of uh, you know the mechanical plug and play here, calculating the expected return for Canadian asset, the euro, the eurozone assets, and then uh, uh, calculating the uh, the 
uh, the domestic return for the fund and the standard deviation for the fund. So let me just drop down to our answers just to walk through. We're just applying the formulas which we've seen before, the return times the currency movement, return and currency movement. And then we can get the portfolio return. It's just a, a weighted average. They just said it was a 50-50 weighting. Then we can calculate the standard deviation of our portfolio. So we first would calculate the variance and then uh, take a square root and get the standard deviation. All this is nice, okay, uh, but I just want you to drop down to question six. So what have we done here? Basically what we've done is we've calculated the US return so, and uh, the effects, uh, the cross hedging effects of these investments. So what does it say? It says that the individual risks uh, uh, of each of these assets is 9.27% and 11.55%. But taken together uh, in the uh, portfolio, the combined risk is in between here. There it is, 9.746%. Uh, so what we've done here is, uh, is we've included the effects of correlation, the, the risk-reducing uh, uh, properties of correlation. That's all. Okay, and uh, now uh, just to look at this, uh, this uh, uh, learning example here. Uh, I just wanted you to recognize uh, the data. So let's see here, we've got Bill, uh, US portfolio manager, global equity fund holds assets in euros, Canadian dollars and British pound. So again, back to our basics. The US is the home currency. We know where we have exposure in euros, Canadian dollars and British pounds. And now what about the outlook? The outlook for the Canadian dollar is negative based on expectation of slower growth. All right, so we want to get rid or, or hedge our Canadian dollars. So we want to be able to sell those Canadian dollars. So we're looking for things uh, uh, in terms of hedging. All right, uh, what else? We gather data here in terms of uh, uh, standard deviations and correlation. I guess we're going to calculate a beta there. And uh, here's a regression. And uh, oh, here's a beta. This would be a minimum variance hedge ratio for the British pound, US dollar. I got to look at the currency pairs. This would be for the US and Euro up here. Okay, so I'm looking at this information and let me drop down to these questions. So it says, given Samrat's outlook for the Canadian dollar, what would be the most appropriate hedging uh, transaction, assuming the quotation is Canadian per US? So again, uh, you know, we're focused on the base here. So we want to get rid of our Canadian, which means in this case, we want to buy US. So if I was using a forward contract, I'd want to go, I'd want to go long a forward contract if, this, if that's what this, uh, you know, was entailing. So uh, long a forward here would tell me I'm buying US and selling Canadian, which is good. Uh, what else could I think about it? You know, I could think about an option. How about a call option? A call option would allow me to uh, to buy the US and sell Canadian. So the currency pair is very important. Down here in this currency pair, I'd want to short a forward. Why? Because that means sell Canadian and uh, buy US. Uh, what else? I could use a put option, which means sell the Canadian uh, uh, and buy US. So the quotation is very important here. That's what I wanted you to take away. All right, and now uh, let's look at these other questions here. It says, assume the portfolio holds 50 million euros in as assets, uh, 50 million euros in assets. Using the data in table one, construct the minimum variance hedge. So in table one, we're given the standard deviations and the correlation. So the ratio of the standard deviations times the correlation will be the beta, and that will be our minimum variance hedge. So let me drop down just to show you. Okay, so here it is. Here's my beta. Here's the correlation times the ratio of standard deviations, uh, uh, return domestic, and then the currency movement. So I've got a hedge ratio of 0.36. So what does this mean? Well, what this means now, if we want to hedge that euro, you know, given, given a quotation US per euro, and I'll show you where this came from, we'd want to short a forward contract. Uh, uh, and how would we calculate that? The hedge ratio times the exposure, the size, gave me 18 million. So I'd want to short a US euro per euro forward contract on based on a notional size of 18 million euro. 
So where did this where did this come from? Well, let's just go back, and we've got to really keep our eye on this. Okay, so note the uh, the currency movement. The return FX is quoted in U.S. per euro. So that's important to know. So that's how I, I crack the code here. Now uh, uh, let's come down here in question three. It says using equation three, calculate the minimum variance hedge ratio for Samrat's exposure to the British pound. Okay, I doubt this will be your question. I just wanted you to know that it's given right here in the equation, 2.55. That is our uh, our hedge ratio. And then it says, assume the currency pair is quoted British pounds per US dollar using equation three and assuming the, the portfolio has 2 million British pounds, outline the correct hedging strategy. So let's just drop down to our answer. And remember the quotation British pound per US dollar. So uh, so the, uh, the British pound exposure needs to be hedged, of course, with a short position of British pounds. So, so we would calculate this. Here's our hedge ratio times the two uh, million British pound uh, 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 exposure. So we need this to be in the size of 5.1 uh, million British pounds. But now look at this part here, okay? Because the currency is quoted as British pound per US dollar, we need to take a long position in the contract. Okay, you know, I was wondering, did you write a short position? Because we think we're hedging. Yes, uh, that uh, would be the case if the quotation was the other way around. But since it's British pound per US dollar, we need to sell a uh, 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 British pound and buy US dollar. So going long this forward means I'm buying US and selling. So keep this in mind, it's a really tricky question. Uh, I think that you got to keep your eye on the currency uh, quotation, how it's given. Okay, and then the last learning outcome statement in this reading just uh, focuses in on emerging markets and currency exposure there. So uh, I just want you to know the basics. I call it trivia. I call it a little fluff here. Uh, so just know when you're dealing with emerging markets, you face higher trading costs. There could be uh, a more extreme events or illiquidity. You know, these are higher risks. You know, if you're talking about the carry trade, uh, this uh, is uh, something you do you want to avoid. The carry trade does not work well if there's uh, volatility or if there's extreme movements or illiquidity. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, also, in these emerging markets, there's uh, potential for the government to get involved uh, and uh, uh, intervene, maybe fixing rates. Uh, so uh, this could work against you. So there's potential for higher risks here. So this reading on currency, uh, I think that what you really need to do is make sure that you're comfortable with what you're looking at. You got to focus in to make sure you understand what your home currency is, what currency you have exposure in, what the expectation for that currency is, and then you need to make sure you recognize how they're giving you the currency quotation, the currency pair and then select the best available answer. Okay, so we will end this here.